groups and the circle of people around us, but only when we focus to the center. And there is a paradox here because it, it seems absurd. I concentrate on the something which is in the middle, I focus on one thing in order to see the circle. Where the tendency is always to look at the circle. What is happening? Who is going to say something? Who is going to attack? Who is nice? Who is uh, liking my foot? Who is talking? Who is here? When we do that, we see the details, we miss the big picture, which is like manas. Therefore, concentration. And in a way, it's also showing the picture. Because this is an act of concentration. Walking on the mountain, climbing a mountain. This is not just any mountain. This is a mountain of life mountain of consciousness, the mountain, the, the magical mountain or the sacred mountain that we find in all cultures, or almost all cultures. This is the Mount Meru, if you want, this is the Kailash, if you want, or where you going up to the sacred, uh, this is the Olympus, this is the Sinai uh, mountain, etc., etc., etc. This is the pyramid also of the Egyptian, where you start with the base, there is, um, how you say, a plurality, there are many, many details. If you think about the pyramid and the base is like a square, this is the material world, this is the shadow, we think this is the reality where all the details are there, but it's a whole pyramid. And concentration is exactly this. One way to explain concentration is the ability to unite reality, to make things one, and therefore to have more observation. It's like climbing on this pyramid or climbing on the mountain to the peak. When you are on the peak, you have better vision. You might miss the small details, but you have a better vision. Suddenly things are more clear. You know where you're coming from. You know where you're going to reach the peak. And this is also a good way to explain that this is not exclusive to any culture. This is another thing that I think philosophy brings us closer, that, that we find that there are similar things. Although of course, when we talk about uh, Tibetan, the, you see the pictures, the, the, all the details here, everything looks Tibetan or in a way from, from the region of Tibet and China. And then we think about uh, the Olympus of the Greek, it's totally something different. And when you think about the, the, the pyramid of the Mayas, it's totally different. When you think about the pyramid of the, of the Egyptian, it's totally, it, those are different ways to explain. But there's one reality. Therefore, to me, and that's to me, there are many paths, many ways to reach wisdom, many ways to elevate yourself, many truths, if you want to say it like that. But at the same time, there is one truth, one path, which is the path that's going up. There's a beautiful picture at the entrance, I don't know if you notice it, of the academic of Plateau, with uh, its picture of Raphael. Yes, yes. And in the middle, there are the two philosophers. That is Plato, and the other one is Aristotle. You can describe as a master and disciple, but the truth is that even if they talk similar, there is a huge gap between the self. That thousands of years after that, this gap was demonstrated. And this is actually from the Renaissance time. And they show Aristotle pointing on the earth. It's like the world of material. And Plato pointing up. So there are many ways to describe this way up, but it's one way, in a way. So concentration, the ability to develop at the high aspect of it, viveka. The ability to observe, to see, concentration. And let's explain this picture, let's start. So you see we have different uh, elements. Again, it's not so focused, so maybe on your card you'll see it more accurate. But what, what we have here, that's where, where we begin. You see, the, this is the beginning. First of all, we have the mountain, of course, and we have this um, path that's going. You see that the path is going up. Uh, we have different uh, levels. So each level, you see there is a different curve. It's like walking the path is walking with curve. Curve means that there is a need to change. So walking the path, path of liberation, yes, 
is not like linearic line. Linearic, you know, it's continuing, 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 continuing the same line. It's more, maybe another way to explain it, um, is like steps. Yes, you know that the goddess of uh, wisdom in Egypt called Isis, and goddess of love and, and, and wisdom. And sometimes she's been described, the way that they, they show it in painting is with a step on her head. Like the way to reach Isis, or wisdom, is like walking on step. And when you walk on step, you need to walk. Yes, but as you walk on step, you have to, you have to conquer the next level, and sometimes it requires you to leave what was behind. And it might seem sometimes paradoxical because uh, if we try to follow a manual that will tell us what to do, do's and does, how you call it, do's and don't, what you need to do and what you don't need to do. Here there is no manual. So the manual is a little bit more abstract because what is right for me might be not right for you. Not because there's different reality, but because we are in a different stage. There is maybe one Dharma, but it's a different Svadharma. Different stage. For one, the next step, that is what you need to conquer. And it is explained, you need to do A, B, C, D. This is what I need. For the other, who is already there, the right is to continue. And therefore, the step that is conquered already, he needs to leave behind. Therefore, there is a need of a change. And this is described as the curve, like change in direction. Always up. It's not a, um, what you see today in Las Vegas and other places, that you have a, everything is an automatic escalator. <laughs> you have to climb. Yes. And in the beginning you see that there is a, there is a palace. The palace is like the world of uh, Maya. Interesting that they describe this world of Maya as a palace. It's palace. We have the Mercedes uh, car, we have uh, all the entertainment of the world, we have Tata cable, whatever. All the entertainment, it's like a palace. We can drink, we can eat, all the luxury of the world. But you see, this is a palace which is, a, if you can observe, there the, are um, clouds around this palace. What, what is cloud? It's like a palace of illusion. It's not a real reality. That is the world of Maya. That is the, the cave of Plato. You satisfy. But one day, if you saw the film Matrix, is exactly about that. One day you feel that something is wrong. Something is wrong, because if we follow what Plato say, we are God, we only for God, then something inside, which is the most latent aspect of ourself, our inner self, will never be satisfied. So life after life after life after life, we might say, okay, that's okay for me, there's no problem. One day, it won't be enough. And there will be a decision to leave this cave. And, you see, the first step is like, there is a river. The separating the exoteric life, the day-by-day -day life, the life of um, external shadow, the cave, and decision to go inside. So it's like exoteric and esoteric. Instead of outside, going inside. It's a decision to be taken. Sometimes we talk about internal life, as it internal, inside, but at in the same time it's like going up. So it's similar. So it is a decision that this man here if this is the mental, the man is like the consciousness, or the real self, let's just say. The spirit, if you want. And he has a decision to cross the river, to go inside. Enough for all the luxury of the palace. I'm looking for reality and crossing the bridge. And then you have uh, the elephant, and there is a monkey here. And you see that uh, in the beginning, the, 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 the soul, or if you want to call it the consciousness, the real man, is, is chasing after his mental. So it's like a mental is uh, leading the way. The mental is totally black. The elephant. An elephant, you know, it's an Eastern symbol. I don't know if it was in Greek they used an elephant. They probably used something else. And an elephant, um, well, till today, when there is a wild elephant, where it's not tamed, like a wild mental, it can be so much destructive, yes? Force. It can destroy a whole village. We know that. Big. Force. Yes? But uh, when it is, um, how you say? Tamed. tamed, yes. And control, it can be a force that serves and helps. And when you see an elephant which is already tamed, 
Sometimes it seems like the most gentle animal that exists. It might walk and the, the smallest thing that will cross his road, he will be gentle enough to stop. When he's not in, he can be destruction. The same thing about our mental. If it's not in control, if it's not in, if it, we don't have this level of concentration, it's wild. And it will just distract us from the truth. Therefore, we read sometimes in some books, ancient books, that they say that the mental is the enemy of the self. But in the same time, it's the tool that will elevate us to see what is there. Tool. And you see, in the beginning, you want to tame, but still you need to chase. And the elephant is much more closer to the monkey. Where the monkey is like, what is the, the destruction? You know, my, my monkey. Monkey is jumping from one tree to another, from one uh, branch to another. He always have this curiosity. His mind is not focused. And here, it is like the force of destruction. So our mental, not you, other people, yes? <laughs> the mental, not in control, much more closer to the monkey, far away from the man, and the man needs to chase him. And he's totally in destruction. He's totally black. Destruction of the world. Internet, this, that, mobile phone, everything. Etc. Etc. And you see that uh, the monk have uh, two tools in his hand. He has. Uh, can, can you see what is there? Because here you can't see for sure. Sorry. He has a rope as a as a lasso. No, it's more. It's it's like a weapon. Yes, it is. A, it is an ankle, and also you can see it as a as an axe. I'm not sure, because if you look at it, this is, a, this is an axe. It's like a weapon. You, you need to see it in more detail. I can show you here, later, where it's, uh, you can uh, have a higher resolution of it. But it's like an axe. And it's also a sacred, there is a, um, a tool like that that the Tibetan use as, as a ceremonial tool. So he's chasing his mental, his wild mental, with this uh, rope, with the lasso, which represent memory as a tool, and also uh, with this axe, which represent attention. And those are the basic tools to start with concentration, or elevate our consciousness. Without attention and memory, there will be no elevating of the consciousness or concentration. Those are tools that help in us. What, what do I mean by that? Because I think we need to explain. Attention is very important. Are you paying attention? Yes. Without attention, you can't have concentration. It's not the same. Because you see, later on, you can see it in your card, he doesn't have even the, those tools. He doesn't need any more the attention. Because the concentration comes natural. And there is no destruction. You can see also that the monkey disappears in some stage. And going back to the tree. But in the beginning, we need it. And what is attention? There is a two, few, but few types of attention. This is what we call, um, let me, this is what we call um, instinct, for example. Yes. If I do this, you notice? Yes. This is attention. You pay attention. That's good. This walk is as an instinct, and we should not change that. If you walk in the street, and you suddenly hear a car <coughs> like that stopping, yes, your attention, the instinct should be there, because it's there to protect you. This is one level of attention. There is another level of attention, which is what we call a passive attention. We all have it. Well, passive attention is like attention that going with our preference, our desires, our fear. And this is one of the best exercises you can start with if you want. Just walk the street from here, I don't know, to Kulaba or in Ariman Drive. Anyway, let's go together maybe in, in uh, imagination, yes, to, uh, to the station here. And then we'll ask him when we reach the, in the, to the station, we'll ask, what did you notice? And you see that uh, normally our attention go with what we prefer. This is what we call a passive attention. We don't need to put any effort. 